We are rolling. Welcome back to Head Kick Audio. I got a special guest for you. I got Cameron the Camera Williamson. That is what we are rolling with uh, yeah. for his professional debut over at Rough 50, October 22nd at the Celebrity Theater in downtown Phoenix, Arizona. Camera I love it. Wow. Absolutely. <laughs> If that was my fucking name, I would be so proud because that is great. You know what? Uh, you know what? I'm embracing it fully, and I'm you're really gassing me up right now. Um, yeah, my my Muay Thai coach Johnny Parsons, he, he just was like, "Oh, the camera!" You know, and it was just like, and it, one day, and it was it was over from there. It's over from there. So. Yeah, and you did it the right way, right? Because the coach gave it to you. You didn't give it to yourself. That's right. That's right. What what for, led for, to the camera? Eye? What like what was the the move? Where he's like, oh, the camera. Eye. Well, you know, we will, you know, in in play, we will use like a Japanese accent, and you know, almost try to be like, like anime style, like Dragon Ball Z style. You know, um, my 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 coach Parsons, you know, who's in the UFC, he's much more of a anime, you know, nerd than I am. But that's sort of where it ro- comes from. And so it's more of like an inside thing, you know, and I've been developing and he's almost been like, hey, you know, you could be the lightweight, you know, Anderson Silva. And, and, and I, you know, stuff like that is like is a really huge compliment to, to a person like me, because if I can just even be mentioned, you know, like with the, one of these guys, then I'm, then obviously I'm doing something right. So um, I, I like to think that I pretty much live like a samurai. I, I, I live the martial arts lifestyle pretty much to a T. And um, so it, it does make sense. And, and uh, you know, it, it is pretty cool too and unique. So it goes with my name too. So can't beat that. It literally flows off the tongue. It it flows <laughs> off the tongue. It sounds fucking cool. I mean, yeah. you can't be. It, 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 sure. And it is. It's unique. You know what I mean? The camera right. Oh, man. So I'm also the commentator for Rough, and I get to say that all night. So I'm super yeah. stoked. Yeah, I'm super stoked. Yeah, we're gonna make it official now. We're gonna make it official. You you definitely put it put it over the <laughs> over the edge for sure. So. Yeah, that that works. That works. I might even I might even change my um, Instagram handle. It might just be, you know what I mean? The, the camera I MMA or something now. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Let's go. 100%. I love it, too. I love it, too. Changing up the Instagram, the camera I MMA. The, right, that's right. Can't confuse that with anything or anybody. Go, I, I, I'm going fresh. It's it, it, it's my debut. You know, I haven't real realistically. I don't have a nickname. I can't give myself one. And, and people have always asked me, "Do you have a nickname?" And I just been like, "No." You know, I thought I was honestly going to end up like um, the Diaz brothers, which I admire them. You know, but they just go by their na- own names. I was like, "Well, whatever." You know, like I, I guess I'm just not worthy of a nickname. But it doesn't get much cooler than that. You know, it's like Mauricio Shogun Hua or, you know, Chuck the Iceman Liddell or Anderson the Spider Silva. Like those or or, or Vanderlei the Axe Murderer Silva the, and, and Randy the Natural Couture. You can't take those names from those guys. So those are like retired jerseys off in the rafters, you know, like nobody can touch. The, you know, no, you know what I mean? So it's just like. My other coach, Pyle, he's quicksand. Johnny's the slugger not now. You know, it's like, I, you know, let me be cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, I, I think it's a, a great addition to the nickname club. I really do. I think it's fantastic. And uh, the fact that we're debuting it at Rough 50, as a matter of fact, we're debuting it right here on the show, uh, mm-hmm. is pretty dope. And I get to hold on to that for the rest of my life. So uh, pretty pretty uh, excited about that. But what I'm more excited about, don't get me wrong, I am as gassed as you about this nickname, but I get to watch you fight. 100%. I get to watch you fight. I get to call your fight. Okay, right. so as right. as exciting as it is for you to make your debut, I take debuts very seriously. 
Um, this is basically your professional introduction into the mixed martial arts world. And uh, it, it's a big deal to you. So it's a big deal to me. And I, mm -hmm. I'm very excited to be a part of it, very blessed to be a part of it. And uh, very much looking forward to seeing you compete. Now, talk to me about Syndicate MMA, okay? okay. How yeah. has training camp been over there in prep for uh, Rough 50? So far, so good. Um, everything is going really smooth. I, I'm lucky to have such good coaches and training partners. Um, I've been at Syndicate for, you know, eight years almost, like ever since I moved to Vegas. And, um, you know, it's it's where I'm at. And that's, you know, I'm loyal, you know. So with that being said, I like I said, I got real good coaches. John Woods, the head coach. Mike Pyle has taken me under his wing and really, you know, done a fabulous job of developing me totally as a complete mixed martial arts fighter, um, which, you know, wasn't was not always easy, but we worked very well together. Um, and so I'm thankful for him. And then Johnny Parsons, I just so happened to move in with him and, um, you know, at a fight house sort of situation that used to be a fight house. But now, it's, you know, it's more just regular people. I'm the last fighter here. We call this the garden. Right. But A.J. Matthews was here, you know, some more fighters. And so I was able to see him and he's our head Muay Thai coach. So I was able to see him and he's really, you know, he's a like we, we know he's in the UFC, but he's really a Muay Thai purist. And, you know, so I've really been able to elevate my Muay Thai with him and elevate my boxing and my MMA with doing all these privates and really connecting with, um, you know, uh, Pyle and Parsons in particular. You know, we got the Shapiro brothers who teach jujitsu and um, they're awesome. They're, you know, they're like my boys, you know, and then boom, here they are. Now they're the coaches and they do a, a phenomenal job. Jerry's a, a phenomenal coach as well. So. And, you know, not to leave out my training partners, I got guys, you know, Jordan Levitt, Sasha, D-Rod, you know, um, you know, my my guy, A.J. Williams. I got I, I got so many guys and there's people coming in and out all the time. Right. From from all over. Just they got they got their camp. They're going to be there for, you know, six, four weeks. And here they are. And so now we got new lightweights and everything else like that or whoever it is, you know, so over the years, I've been able to lock, lock horns with quite a few UFC fighters and, um, you know, coming, coming to my own now and take a step here professionally. So, uh, camp's been going well and I, and I feel strong. I feel strong. So. Well, a a as you should, uh, ahead of your debut. Now, what does it mean to you to be able to call yourself now a professional fighter or just a professional athlete if you prefer well you know i've played sports my entire life i played football and lacrosse um the wrestling coach tried to get me to wrestle i really should have if i wasn't you know th thinking about the freaking singlet you know <clears throat> but now i'm wrestling right you can't and, and that's the hardest part it's the hardest part ask any real mma fighter if they don't say it's wrestling they, they they're full of it they're full of it you know um, so I've been able to, uh, just, de just develop my game. I conduct myself very disciplined and I know a lot of fighters do like, like I, there's, there's fighters who I look up to who are so disciplined, not just with training every single day, but really going and doing everything, you know, um, like, like, like my mom used to say, you know, dying their eyes and crossing their T's, like really going over everything, doing their strength and conditioning, eating right, getting the right recovery, having, you know, their co co listening to their coaches. Um, that's what I see as what separates good people from great people or amateurs from professionals, right? You know what I mean? Because it's like, what? This guy just decided he's going to go professional. I didn't give him some extra body armor. He's still going to take, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like something about him. So I, I definitely over the last couple of years have bloomed in confidence and um, also been able to get more competitions. This will be my fourth competition this year. 
you know, I had a fight earlier this year in January, my last MMA fight, I, I ended up winning by knockout and I had two um, Muay Thai fights in a tournament in which I won one and I lost one. And I was able to learn and develop a lot in the, in those competitions. And now here we are, you know, here, here we are for my pro debut. So, you know, I'm, you know, I'm ready to uh, test myself. I'm ready to really test myself. Well, and you got a pretty good dance partner in uh, Brett Cooper. Talk to me about what the opponent does well and what we should keep an eye on. Oh, well, don't tell him this. <laughs> All right. But um, no, we, <laughs> we've we been scouting him a little bit. And he, um, I mean, it looks like he likes to do pull counters. You know, he likes to try to bait guys in and pull counter. Um, but I have, I have an answer for that. I have an answer for that. So, I, I and and I won't I won't I won't say what that is, but um, you know if that is his only game and switching stances, if he thinks switching stances is going to throw me for a loop, you know, like he's going to be he's going to be in for a long night, you know. So um, I, I train to be able to not only handle myself everywhere, but you know, at least be able to get to a position where I can finish. Um, you know, so, you know, because that's really how it is. It's like kill or be killed, you know. It's like I've seen fighters that, you know, for instance, you know, like I don't I don't want to name names or anything, but they let off the gas pedal at the right at the end and then they get and then they get killed. Uh, you know, like I said, I my amateur record is three and three, but I I, I lost one of those fights that I really, truly believe that I won you know and it was like you know fight your fight that's what I learned from that you know what I mean and always go for the finish too so that's um that's the tr the mentality that I train with even though I'm not finishing my you know apart my opponents like and 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 uh you know knocking guys out in the gym and things like that I'm right up to there like I work right up to the level, you know what I mean? So, and that's what professionals as well are able to do. I'm less likely to get hurt by, you know, Sasha Polonikov, you know, like my, my boy, or like um, one of these real UFC fighters because they're a true professional and they know how to train that way. So that way they can come back again the next day. And I'm sure Brett Cooper has plenty tr good training partners and I'm sure he's got a game plan for me as well. Well, uh, it's very interesting because Syndicate and The Lab are two of the best gyms in the world. I mean, so it's really uh, just a matter of, you know, imposing your game plan and, and your fight better than your opponent. That's a, it, it. It's what it comes down to. So mm -hmm. I think the fans are in for a treat. We know you like to finish. We know you got good hands. You're coming fresh off a Muay Thai tournament where you're telling me you learned more, which tells me your 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 striking is going to be a little bit better. Uh, and that excites me. You know what I mean? When guys, I don't really, I don't really like it when fighters uh, they 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 don't know how to take a loss. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make? Sense? Am I making That's sense? Right. Here? That's right. And I'll be honest with you. My last literal competition was a, a unanimous decision loss where if I had to say why I lost, it was because I got emotional. And when I got emotional, I played his game rather than my game. And he was able and, and also this, my um, people have uh, reactions like when the pressure's on, like they might react a certain way you know, when the pressure turns up, like, and that can be a tell, you know, and that can be a bad thing, you know, like if, if, um, if that's, if, if you let your opponent read that. So I was able to learn from that. It was like, wow, I didn't get my ass whooped, you know, but I still lost fair and square. He beat me, even though he was just holding double unders and just kind of kneeing me a little, you know, and just scoring points, whatever he played smarter. He, he he played smarter, so you know, fight smart, and and now I'm. Uh, that's where my awareness. That's where my awareness is in training now.
it's like you know where I'm where am I in the ring and being able to use the being able to use the ring stuff like that stuff like that so yeah it's all it's all development right you're always in a stage of development and then it's like oh on this day you know you're going to show us where where you're at and everybody's going to see where you're at you're going to and the lights are going to be on the music's going to be loud and it's going to be fucking crazy and is that what you want to do <laughs> you know what i mean so it's like <laughs> It's like it's 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 all it's all you it's all the things you know it's exciting and it's nerve wracking and you you know it's all it's every single emotion going into it and then finally you just let you just you just have to let it rip you just have to let it rip so and at that point at that point it's all mostly reaction anyways you know it's all mostly reaction anyways it's not going to be much thinking or talking going on then yeah, it's know? all going to be about uh, you know. Your, your preparation, your preparation is going to get you through this fight. However, the game plan you guys worked uh, plays out. You know what I mean? That that's yes. going to transpire during the fight. Now, uh, you're not the only Vegas boy on the card, uh, and I know I, I, you know, was Instagram stalking you a little bit uh, before the fight, and uh, you know, you had a message for the people that are going to come out and uh, and support you, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a very strong message. It was a very strong yeah, message. Yeah. yeah. You want but, to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, you know, it's like it's interesting because I, I do post a lot of Instagram videos and most and, and, and so a lot of times when I make things like that, I I'm like, man, that was a little harsh. And I should probably delete that, you know. And sometimes, you know, I really get close to deleting it, but I, I didn't. And that's just how I felt at the moment because Sure. Um, you know, I don't drink and I'm pretty stoic in how I think and live and act, you know, but um I uh I've had a couple fights that where you know, I've had a couple fights where I I won twice and afterwards something got happened, something happened. It got ruined because the people who I was around, they were just too far gone. And once they're too far gone, they're just too far gone. And they're people that I love and they're people that I don't, I wouldn't mind if they drink really, you know, um, but drinking's not all that cracked out that it's to be, you know what I mean? It's not really, um, you know, I might, I don't, I'm, be, you know, be real with you. I smoke pot, and, you know, I, I, I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm not here to judge anybody. Everybody's going to, has their, is going to do whatever they're going to do. But, you know, I want them people there to be there i want them to be present i want them to enjoy not just the fight and everything that i put into this which is everything but this is for them you know like i want you guys to feel everything you know i want to, even even though if you're nervous too and you're scared too for you're scared for me and everything else like that like just go through it because it's so much more rewarding on the other side you know what i mean when you when you can really have one of those memories and for 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 forever and ever and not have it be just this drunken haze where you know you got to watch the replay because you don't even know what happened and 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 things like that you know that's just and it's not just for my for my people that's just in general you know it's like that's just in general you know it's like enjoy the sport learn about the sport as fighters we should really be encouraging that anyways like there's a lot going on here. <laughs> There's, a, there, there, there's many, many layers of stuff of, th of stuff that's going on here that, to be appreciated. And, um, you know, so that was that that was really that. But like I said, I don't mind that people drink and 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 enjoy and enjoy themselves. I just don't want people to be drunk. I don't want people to be at risk, you know. That I care about. And as a man, I'm going to say whatever I want. How about that? Especially about to the people who I love and care about, and they and they got the message. They got the message. You know what I mean? You, you know. So that's that. That's that. Yeah. Well, okay. So uh, I'll I'll touch on uh, alcohol. Uh, the mm -hmm. subject in question. Uh, I have lost a lot of memories 
and, you know, ruined uh, occasions because of alcohol myself. So I can definitely understand, um, you know, the the feeling. And, that and me it, too. And me too. I've been shitty. One, one time I blacked out. My sister had to come and get me. And I really, really, really hurt my shoulder. Now, whether or not it was because of my own doing or because I was around, it was the Reds opening day and somebody put something in my drink and boom, you know, that because I never blacked out before, but it doesn't mean that it won't happen to you. It's like, you know, I see way much more destruction than I do anything else. And, and, you know, that's just me being honest. That's just me. That's just me being honest. And I want people to have fun. And that's what it's supposed to be for is to celebrate is to celebrate, you know, one of one of the times I tried to drink after my fight and it and it didn't go well. You know what I mean? I, I'm the type of guy, you know, you know, like I said, I'll do my I do my thing. I'll do my thing, you know, to each their and to each their own, to each their own. For sure. But like I said, I understand the the frustration and the feeling that you were, you know, then the point you were trying to get across. Um, I mean, I've scaled back so much. I haven't had a beer in probably two or three weeks. And I used to be yeah. every day when I get home and then fucking get trashed on the weekend. So I definitely uh, understand and kind of sympathize with, you know, the feelings that you were feeling. But yeah. uh uh, on a more positive note, we got a fight coming up in about eight 100%, fucking days. hundred percent. Fucking days. So soon. So soon. Are you feeling any pressure ahead of your debut? A hundred percent. You know, you, you feel nerves. Um, like my coach says, you know, if I told you, right, <laughs> if I told you, right, hey, walk through that jungle or that forest, right? And there's going to be, you know, three lions and four wolves in there, right? And they're hungry, bro, right? <laughs> like, and just go all the way through till you get to the other side, right? And like, don't, like, 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 make sure you get to the other side. Like, you're going to need all those nerves, you know? So it's what you do with it. And, and how you do with it and, and why you do it and all these things that go into it. That's why I like it's accumulation, the accumulation of my whole life. You know, that's what that's that's the truth. That that's also what my other coach has imparted to me as well. Like, hey, man, it's not just six weeks or. You know. Seven days. or Because guess what? It's going to be, you know what I mean? It's going to be minutes and then it's going to be moments and then you're going to be there, you know? And so um, you just, you, you deal with it because you have to. That's what this is. That's what it is. You know what I mean? You're dealing with yourself and you're dealing with the moment and the pressure. And um, nobody said it was going to be easy. You know, that's why not a lot of people is doing it. I could have picked a whole bunch more things to do that would have probably been easier. You know what I mean? But um, I just told myself, I'm going to try and I'm going to try my best and see and, and see what happens. If somebody, you know what I mean, knocks me down and drags me out and not, I'm not worth nothing, then I'm not worth nothing. But until then, I'll be fighting. You know what I'm saying? So that that's what that's where I'm at now. That's what that's where I'm at now. So. I'm pre I've always been pretty driven. I've been pretty competitive and um, I've always been an athlete. So <clears throat> training comes pretty natural to me. Practice comes pretty natural to me. I, um, listening to coaches and, you know, working with the team and all those things. I, I've been doing all, doing that my whole life and team sports, even even though fighting is individual, you know, Team sports definitely helped me for that. I mean, especially, I mean, even with like strength and conditioning before I, luckily I'm working with the guys at the UFC, UFC PI right now. And that's like, you know, unbelievable. I've never been so, never been so, in, so strong, so strong in my life, honestly. So I'm interested to see how I look now. I'm, I'm interested to see how I perform now. So.
Well, I think uh, the Camerai is going to perform. You know what I'm saying? 100%. I, I, think, 100%. I think we're we're in for a real treat. Uh, lightweight division is uh, one of the hardest divisions uh, in MMA, period. You look 100%. at all the major promotions, uh, their lightweight divisions are always stacked with nothing but killers. And, uh, you know, you're no exception, man. Like I said, you're, you're record at three and three, but... You got a lot of finishes to your name. You know how to put people away. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? So the camera yes, definitely knows how to get it done. How did you get into MMA? Um, you know, when I was 17, I was watching Chuck Liddell with my buddy Vinny, you know, basically like, you know, <laughs> back in the day, like versus Vanderlei Silva and like, and, and stuff like that. So, and then, like I said, I, I was a big Nick Diaz head and I, uh, we started jujitsu when we were 19 and then I moved back cause I was 19. I was in Coachella Valley. I did, I went to jujitsu and Cub Swanson was there my first day, he balled me up into a pretzel, tapped me out over and over. I had, and, and this is, you know, you get back into the car, you're a 19 year old kid. I didn't been in street fights, whatever. F played sports. I I'm this fucking jock dude, you know, like like more popular, like like I'm the more macho, like what? I'm the um, tough, you know. And you are so humbled down to nothing, like from jujitsu to where you're like really questioning, you know, like everything, you know. It's like because that's all ego. You know what I was just talking about right there you, is your young, you know, your young youthful ego, um, your pride, your pride, you know. But so that's how we we got into it, and it was Coachella Valley Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I moved home. My buddy just kept doing it. My buddy Vinny um, Candice, he's a black belt now. But um, I moved home. I started doing a little Muay Thai. I went to like a Jeet Kune Do school, and then I came back out when I was probably. 23 we started doing more jujitsu and then like at paragon and then i took my first fight right and it was in sacramento and i had only done jujitsu and i had sparred like two times and you know it was against a guy who was like three and two and or something you know and it was you know and he was long and strong and you know i can't remember, quite remember his name black dude but he fucked me up in Gladiator Challenge. And really, like, that was my first fight ever at 170, you know, which I'm not, I'm not a welterweight, truly. Um, I wish they'd make a 65, but that's another story. But, like, right. you know, it's like, so, you know, one thing led to another. I got my ass whooped, and then I moved out here. And then when I moved out here, I just trained for, like, four years straight. And I was like, Cause I knew how serious it was serious. It was then cause I got TKO'd and, and I felt like the ref just let me just fucking get like really met, like beat up, you know, like go back home and get in the shower, cold shower and like really like take some aspirin. And like, that was not a good night. That was a very scary, you know, moment. So that's how I was introduced to fighting. And wow. so like, I was, I, I was this very overzealous kid. And with with some jujitsu, a try a nice triangle, but that was it. And and I got fucking uh, TKO full mounted. So it was like you know, and and so and it was and it was bad. And that's how I got introduced. So I knew the seriousness of it. And then boom, I come to Syndicate, first day on the mats. Here's Tom Waller, right, right. So so like <laughs> it's like Khalil Roundtree and like you know dudes like, and I'm just like this fucking wet noodle kid. You know, it's like. But I come a long way since then, and they all know it. They all know it, you know. And like Michael Chiesa, all those guys, they all know about me. You know what I'm saying? And and maybe maybe the, maybe the world will get a chance in, to know about me, and I'll know and I'll know a lot more about me after this. How about that? How about that? Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. And I think, uh, like I said, you're at one of the best teams in the world that produces a bunch of fucking top level talent. You know what I mean? Across. Yeah. 
a bunch of organizations. You know what I mean? So oh definitely, definitely looking forward to see what your pro debut has in store outside of fighting though. Yeah. What are some things? I mean, we, we talked anime a little bit before. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. What, what are some other things you like to do outside of MMA, my man? Um, you know, I will play video games. I'll read like I'm, I'm reading like I got the 1980s Star Wars, you know, Re- Return of the Jedi, you know, you know, A New Hope, like the the classic, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like starting to read through that and that's getting pretty crazy. Um you know, so like I don't play video games. I'll go, I'll go hiking. Um, right now, like man, it's like right now, it's like pretty much just training. So that's all that's really like <laughs> been on my mind. And and I'm glad to even do something like this. Like I, I purposely went and bought Mario Kart, and I was just playing Mario Kart just to get my mind off of um, training. And like honestly, honestly, so. Um, I know I know some fighters do that, like Robert Whitaker and and Demetrius Johnson and stuff like that. They game, so I definitely do that. And, but um, yeah, like I would say I go I would go I go out and you know and eat and and do different things. Like you know I, I pretty much I'm a one one man band, lone wolf. So I just take care of myself. So it's like I train. If I'm training two times a day. The rest of the day, it's like I'm I'm basically just picking up after myself. I'm recovering and things like that. So it doesn't take much for me um, to be satisfied. I've been through quite a lot in my life, so the what I have now, I, I feel like extremely blessed with. I just got a new car, and so I just been driving that around. I got my longboard skateboard, which that was my transportation before I got the car, and. So I learned how to freaking longboard and that's, and, and now I just do that for fun. And, you know, and, and um, so that's, you know, that's what I do for the most part. Hang out with chicks, hang out with chicks a little bit, but not so much right now. Not, not so much right now. That's like, I just, I just can't even like, because I'm single, I'm usually, usually in a relationship, honestly, but um yeah, the last couple of fights, I've just, I, I've been single, so I've just kind of been on my own doing my lone wolf thing. But um, I'll watch film, like break down, you know, technique from like wrestling. Like there's like the school of wrestling or, you know, Rudis wrestling, and because I try to like learn things as things as much as I can, or I'll watch like certain Muay Thai videos of guys that um are recommended to me because they're long and you know you know my my buddy aj matthews thinks that i could utilize some of their skills you know so like man it's just constantly learning and um i hang out with my buddy johnny parsons like quite a bit so the schedule is like wake up you know hydrate maybe i'll I'll get a bowl of oatmeal, maybe, and then I'll go train, and then we'll get done training. We'll go to the PI. We'll eat, you know, which is very like I'm very fortunate to be here in Vegas. It's it's hard to get on my feet, but I'm here now, so, um, yeah, just to utilize everything because the PI's got everything, you know, and because he's in the UFC, I get to go with him, so. I have a bit had the luxury of that, and then because of my fight, they um, they have been doing fight conditioning with conditioning with me, man. But I got, you know, like I said, I, I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see on the night on the night. But um, yeah, I hike, man. Like I t- I, t- I tore up most of the trails on Red Rock. I could bowl. I could. I was playing pool. I was playing pool the other. The other the other week, like last week, um, not you know not winning every game, but definitely uh, making some sick shots, like hitting four or five in a row, so stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. We won't talk about my pool skills. We just well, we won't we won't even bring that up. Like, it, makes me, it makes me want to get better at it because I've I've hit a couple sick shots that were like, okay, hold on. There might be some skill to this. 
not me. I don't, I don't make nothing unless it's on accident. And even that, but I get so cocky. I make one shot and I'm, oh shit, I got it. Fucking pick up. See, the wait, hold on. You, you have a guitar. See, I'll, I'll, I'll pluck these guitar strings a little bit. Like I can't read music, but I can play some sounds and I keep my guitar pretty much in dad, dad tuning. So it's like a little bit, a little bit lower, but I can, I can make my own little riffs and chords and like pluck and stuff like that, you know? And so that's, that's therapeutic as well. For sure. Yeah. Not classically trained in uh, guitar either, but I've got several, I think six or seven last I counted, you know, for, for somebody who doesn't actually play guitar, that's probably one too many guitars, but uh, now you're starting to be a collector. Now you're starting to be a collector though. They got value. They definitely have some value to them. You get the right ones, right? Fender and like certain ones. For sure. But I'm not I'm not into collecting. I just got the ones that I like. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got an acoustic uh, bass, an acoustic guitar. Uh, my wife's got an Epiphone. I've got a Fender uh, electric uh, bass. I mean, so I got quite a few. And then she likes to get me uh, cool little instruments uh, for every birthday or Christmas or whatever. So I always get some weird off-the-wall instrument because I, I play in a band too. So. Oh, okay. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, so what's I get the, all the the name of your band? instruments. That's pretty dope, man. Let's go. What's the name of your band? Uh, believe it or not, Cutthroat Gorgeous. Let's go. I, I fuck with that. Let's go. That's cool, man. Yeah, we've been a band for 20 years. Okay, let's rock, man. That's yeah, hard. so since we were little fucking kids with no facial hair, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you so, do, I mean, shit, you don't look real. Oh, shit, that's crazy you've been together that long. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't look real old, but, I, you know, 33 ain't, you know, young either. Damn, you started when you guys were real young. This yeah. and, it's, and it's the same dudes? Not one person's different? Me and the main other dude, we're the only two originals. Okay, okay. We're the only two originals. But, like I said, we're a unique thing, and, uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, no, I'm going to check you out. I'm going to check you out. Cutthroat Gorgeous. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot you a link or whatever, so you That's can check funny. it out. That's funny. Okay, let's get it. Let's get it. All right, uh, October 22nd at the Celebrity Theater in downtown Phoenix, Arizona for Rough 50. Do you have a fight prediction? Man, on how it's going to go, I'd have to say, man, it doesn't go the distance. And um, maybe uh, maybe referee stoppage. Maybe, maybe by referee stoppage. So... Um, yeah. Well, if it Ooh. ends, that's how it's going to end. The ref is going to stop it, whether he taps or goes to sleep. Right, right. Like, I think he's probably pretty tough and he can move and he can probably move pretty, pretty well. But um, for how long is it for, for how for how long? Because I feel like I kind of do know his game plan and we'll see, you know, could, I could be very wrong. So, um. But I, I, like I said, I'm trained everywhere and ready to fight everywhere it goes, and um, impose my impose my will and my and what I'm doing. So it's more it's more like he's in there with me at this point, and um, you know he's one in one. He's already got his feet wet, you know. I, so and and. Uh, it's in, you know, he's from Phoenix, I'm pretty sure, or he's from Arizona, so it's like on his turf, you know what I mean? They're not gonna like me. I'm I'm guessing, but um, you know, I'm just there to do what I'm there to do, you know what I mean? So I like that. Uh you said that uh he's in there with me. That's some uh Rorschach energy right there. Yeah, like like really that's what it is in all reality that's how that's 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 really how i see it that's really how i see it like by the time the 
the thing actually closes and and it's go time and a, a few blows are you know thrown like like a few a few shots are fired like you know it's like all right well you know <laughs> you know what i'm saying on guard like protect yourself at all times protect yourself at all times you know what i mean if he if he come if he go, goes out there and beats me up he's pretty damn good he's pretty damn good you know what i'm saying so we'll see all right. And then, of course, nobody comes on the show and does not answer this question. After you get your hand raised on October 22nd, how are you planning to celebrate with your victory meal? Oh, man. I will probably have several victory meals. Let me think. Like, when I come back here, I used to work at this restaurant, Joe Seafood. And um, they're awesome. Shout out Joe Seafood. <laughs> You know, um, but uh, yeah, that, down on the strip, they're super good, right? But I'll go down there and I'll get some stone crabs, right? Maybe, and oh my gosh, who knows, man? I might even get like a New York strip too with it, like, or a rib, or like if I'm with somebody else, I might get the ribeye or something, like, dude, just the dry, the dry age one or something like that, and just really splurge a little bit. But um, yeah, I'll probably I'll probably have several. I'll probably have several. Yeah, yeah. right now it's like right now it's like, dude, I I'm I'm really only eating like one meal a day, and it's like you know what I mean, licking licking my chops and trying to come down, just make it so the weight cuts not that not that hard. You know what I mean? Just try to make it easy on myself as it, as it can be. But um, because I can definitely. I can definitely cut the weight because it's mostly it's it's mostly water and my I definitely hold hold a bunch of water, but um, yeah, some some stone crabs, oh, maybe like some Korean barbecue, because like I'll eat red meat, very very choice like very choice you know mm -hmm. like. I'm so picky about my food, like high quality, you know, organic, grass fed, non GMO, all the shit, all the shit. You know what I mean? I got a New York strip in there right now, but I just, I just don't know if I should eat it this close to the fight. Cause once I get closer to the fight, it's more so seafood and that's pretty much, it's pretty much just seafood and vegetables. It's like, or plant based things, plant based things. So, because it just makes it easier. Like, I would recommend that to fighters. Good quality fats, like coconut oils and avocados and things like that. Because when your body switches over and starts burning that shit, it, you're not going to hurt. You know what I mean? Versus if, if you had a whole bunch of processed shit and deep fried shit and alcohol and all this other shit, that's why guys hurt. That's why, because what it's going to get down into that. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay, we found the shit. You know what I mean? Like your body, like, when I get all the way down to 55, buddy, I haven't weighed that much since I was, you know, in, in seventh grade, eighth grade, eighth grade. I'm a grown man. You know what I mean? So you get down there, dehydrate real quick, you know, face off and 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 look at each other. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, and the eyes don't. And the eyes don't lie. And then and then you, you know, you do thing, rehydrate and go at it. You know what I'm saying? The next day. So I got I got I, I got good uh support. Um, yeah, I got good support. So well, I'm ready. Support, uh, yeah. I also want to give you a chance to to do some shout outs. Uh, anybody you'd like to thank that's gotten you to your career thus far? Um, thank you know, Syndicate, John Wood. I really big huge thanks to Mike Pyle. Love you, love him. You know, that's my that is my coach. Um and really like a mentor, a mentor, you know, in the game. Just one, just one of them. And Johnny Parsons, that's my that's my brother in arms, and that's also my Muay Thai coach, Shapiro Brothers, all my training partners, God, you know, um, everything I have is 
is because God has given me, given it to me or given me the ability to get it myself. So that's how I, that's how I look at, that's how I look at things now. So, um, you know, I, I'm thankful, you know, for my family, for, for my family and um, for all of my support. Like I said, even Joe Seafood, like the, the, it goes back. And the people who've really been following me, my friends, like the, I, all these jobs I've worked over the years and all the people who are like, oh, man, you know, you're going to make it. And all the people who are like, oh, man, it's never going to fucking do anything. You know what I mean? Like, you're like everyone, you know, like so now, now it's like, you know. I'm excited. I'm excited to to potentially be one and out real quick. You know what I'm saying? And and less than less than 10 days. It's very exciting. I believe the number is eight days. Eight days away, eight this days away. stick goes down. Again, Rough 50, October 22nd at the Celebrity Theater. You can use the fighter code that will be put in right underneath uh, this fighter right here. The camera right will have his uh, fighter code right there. And then also his Instagram will also be underneath his, uh, uh, underneath his, uh, his image. So if he changes it, We'll have to get there at the camera right MMA. You know what I'm saying? Oh no, that's what we're doing. It's it's, it's basically a done deal at this point. <laughs> right? It's basically a done. Like it might happen tonight. It might happen tonight. So I'm gonna get oh, a notification. Man. It's gonna be at the camera and I'm gonna be like, that's what's up. Hey Steve, man. I appreciate you, dude. I appreciate you, dude. Showing love. Showing love. 100 yeah. percent man. It's it's been a blast having you on the show. Uh, I really liked uh, talking to you. We got to talk about, you know, your fight. We got to, you know, talk about some of uh, how bad I am at pool, uh, some guitars. You know, we got to talk music. Uh, we got to talk about it all, brother. I really appreciated your time on the show. And really, I cannot wait to see you fight, my guy, because I know when you get in there, something's going to happen. Something's got to give and someone's going to get finished. Man. Fireworks, buddy. Fireworks. Sir. Yes, sir. All right, man. Well, before I let you go, you got anything else you want to get off your chest? No, man. Um, God bless you, man. God bless you and your family, man. I appreciate it. Um, shout out Roman Athletic Institution, my management. Unbelievable, guys. Unbelievable support. Um, yeah, best uh, best management team that I could see like from, from here. And uh, thank God. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Everybody coming out. Everybody who watches this, even if you are against me and you want the other guy to win, you know what I mean? Appreciate it. Appreciate it's it. It's all love, baby. It's all love. Well, yeah. until next time.